light shines in the darkness and darkness comprehended it not. Righteousness is God's ability unveiled. It is an intrusion of God's divine ability to put to end the issue of failure in darkness. Whatsoever that is born of God overcome it, the world. We are not ordinary. The life and the nature of God is in us. If God wants to do something in your neighborhood, it's going to be true in you. I hold family to my declaration of faith. And what is my declaration of faith? It is the testimony of Jesus. I can see a glorious me. I can see a better me. I can see a truthful me. I can see a better me. I can see a better me. I can see a better me. Glory to God. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 16. I want you to see patterns here. What, what pattern did you see with this, with this encounter that Jesus had? The first thing they did was they camouflage. All right? They, they acted. The first thing the demon did was to worship. And Jesus said, I can tell you from a mile. All right? Yes. Acts chapter 16. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Good. Reading from verse 16. Now it happened as we went toward the prayer. That a certain slave girl possessed with what? With the spirit of what? Of divination. You know, what we'll call fortune telling demons. Palm readers. And that's why I keep telling you, as a Christian, you have no business associating yourself with heroes, phileos, what they call those. You know, if you're born between this and this, horoscope is demonic. Yes, it is. Are you hearing me? It's demonic. Oh, I'm a filial. Today, it says, uh, I'm going to be sad. <laughs> and the Bible says, the just is like a light that shines brighter. And brighter, even what, even <laughs> onto a perfect day. <laughs> and for some of you who goes to Chinese, what are called those fortune? Stay away from those things. <laughs> See, people are controlled by those things. You don't yes. understand these things. Yes. You, we are God's people. We are to See, our future is in God's word. We already know. Business, take it away from here. <laughs> Until you open one, so you are dying right now. <laughs> Is that in the name of Jesus? <laughs> oh boy, you have no idea the havoc that those Chinese fortune cookies have cost so many. You have no idea. He says that this lady was possessed by a fortune telling demon. This is a, de a demon whose main responsibility is to deceive mm -hmm. by way of fortune telling. Okay? That's, that's his job. He doesn't put sickness on people, but he just, I think so many years ago, what they call, you call a number, and <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> In, in, in church folks, in church people, you see the deception. In church people, 
and church people will call. And church people, those same church people who have the audacity to say the church is after our money. Well, Miss Cleo doesn't take money, I guess. Does, he, does she take money? The Bible says, a fortune-telling demon that she watched, she made a lot of profit. Yes. For who? For her master. Now notice, look at the deception. When she saw the apostle, she said, this is a man of God. Come on. Oh my goodness. Now look at it yourself. Was she telling the truth? Yes. But what was the motive? To yes. deceive. Mm -hmm. He said, she said, these men are the servants of the most high God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. <laughs> and if you are a rookie, you, your head will be swelling now. Wow. Say, wow. <laughs> they know I'm a man of God. <laughs> not knowing not knowing because she said this the first time and the apostles didn't catch it they did not catch it the first time next verse just watch and this she did for what? for many days until my god something clicked Quickly. And when it clicked, Paul the apostle did not waste time. Because if he had perceived this day one, he would have done what he did. Yeah. But Paul greatly annoyed, yeah. told and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus, yes, come out. Come on out of here. Yes. Got the money. Mm. Yeah. The next time, what's it's clear or what? They, uh, the, the next time you see that lady on your TV, you say, Oh, dear Lord, man, talk about you. <laughs> I command you in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Yeah. Mm. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, you may say, Oh, it's TV. Can I tell you something? There is no distance. In the realm of the spirit. Amen. Time does not exist in the spirit realm. The tape may have been recorded six months ago. Mm. <laughs> my God, my God. In the realm of the spirit, time does not exist. There is nothing like past, present, and future in the spirit realm. It's now. When you begin to cast out that devil, that authority that you have taken will be backdated six months ago. Wow. Oh, auntie, uh, there's a palm reader. Maybe we should go. Uh, let's go find out if this boy is the one. Go find out if this brother is the one. You want to go find out from a demon if the brother is the one or I should look for another. By the time you leave, the demon, that fortune teller, see, can I tell you, they, they will sell you what they have. Yeah. Okay? You're definitely going to live there with a demon. You paid for it, so take it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they didn't force you. Oh, 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 it was a, it was a fair, county fair, and there's a boot, and, and you clearly saw palm reader, and you walked in there, and you sat down. 
and you give them your hand. By the time you leave, you're going to leave with like 10 hands. <laughs> but notice what happened. He says, now, why am I telling you this? I'm speaking to you by the Spirit tonight. A word is enough for the wise. And let me just make it clear now. If anybody is telling you to send them $40 so they can prophesy into to your life, you better run. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Because Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. But if you have not received what you have freely, you are permitted to sell it. God gives freely, but Satan doesn't give free. The sorcerer, bad Jesus, knew this. He paid the apostles because that's what he knew. Because the magic that he was operating with, he paid for it. So he was charging people for it. So when he saw that Peter lay hands and people were receiving the Holy Ghost, he gave them money. He said, can I have that saying? He thought it was another, a greater level of magic, another dimension. A new way to make money now. Okay. Let me show you that. Let me show it to you now. Book of Acts. I have a word for you. They give me the word. Uh, I need $200. I have a pastor, get out from here, you devil. That, that would be my reaction. You there? Okay. Acts chapter number five. Oh, someone just popped on Facebook. Oh, uh, send me $20. I, I have a word. I, I, I have a special prayer for you. A, a special prayer for you. They prayed for me now. I, I, you need 20. I need 20 for me to release the prophetic anointing. <laughs> oh, dear, dear. How, 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 how gullible God's people have become. I don't know how we got there. And that $20 is all that you have. Come here now. You there. Did I say Acts chapter number 5? No, not chapter 5. Chapter number eight. Chapter eight. Chapter eight. Chapter eight. Oh, hallelujah. Now, remember, the Bible says the sorcerer professed faith. <laughs> wow. yes. Ooh. Yeah. Now, this, I say, listen, this sorcerer receives salvation. Okay. Okay. Maybe you don't understand this. So when I was talking about bring $20, these are people who have corrupted. I'm not, I'm not critical. I'm just, I'm warning you tonight, all right, yes. to beware. Be careful, okay? Be careful. Be what? Careful. Be careful. Because when you study from, he said there was a certain man called Simon who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone what great, to whom they gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this is the man, or this man is the great power of what? Of God. And they heeded him because he had what? Astonished them with what? With his sorcery. For, for what? For a long time. But when they believed Philip 
as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also would believe. And when he was baptized, oh my goodness. You see, his salvation was for monetary purposes. Listen, listen now. The only reason why he, 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 he believed and got baptized wow. was because people were moving away from what he was doing. He felt like Philip has a new anointing now. Wow. People were following Philip. And he said, I will join them. And I want to get to the bottom of that power. I need that stuff. I need that stuff. I need that stuff. And Philip didn't tell. Couldn't tell. But Peter knew. Because when Peter came, he said, you, you are a devil. I know you. I can spot you from a man. I don't care that you sing. <laughs> and you have some breakdowns on. Huh? <laughs> oh, don't be fooled. Are you hearing me? Look at what he said. He said, now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem, verse 11, heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, whom when they had come down, prayed what for them, that they might what? Receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them, they had only been baptized, what? In the name of the Lord Jesus. And when they lay hands on them, they what? They received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Spirit was given. He offered them what money? He said, I want it. I want this, this day. <laughs> and Peter said, whoa, hold on, bro. Your money perish with you. Oh, Pastor, I'll give you $10,000 if you let me serve in a dicking board. <laughs> I heard that uh, this, uh, you guys are trying to buy a building. I, I can give 50000 for that building. Uh, I just want this. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, 50 k This... Take it, give me the 50. No, not the Apostle Peter. How many of God's people who have sold their soul because of money? You know, one of the things that the Lord said to me yesterday, you know, in one of my sessions of prayer, you know, I, I, I was, if, he said, many of my servants in the city, he said they are pursuing, they are running counterfeit, counterfeit vision. He said they are not doing what I've called them to do. And he showed me in the vision the reason why they are running counterfeit vision. Because of greed. Let me say something to you. We have to reach the unchurched. There's no yes. doubt about it. But what I have noticed is that in our bid to reach the unchurched, we have lost our identity yeah. in Christ. Yeah. We have lost our value in a bid to reach the unchurched. We have compromised and so compromised and so compromised and so compromised that we don't even know what we believe in anymore. As long as they come, that's fine by me. No, you're wrong. I was at a minister conference. Uh, uh, you know, this is a closed door <coughs> meeting. A minister, he has 5,000, 4,000 people who come to his church every Sunday. He said, I'm not happy. He said, the reason is because he said, there's no hunger in these people. He said, they are not growing. He said, when I was at their age in my Christian work, I was, I was, I was burning. He said, they come. He said, but they are not, they just come. He said, I'm unhappy. He said, what can I do? He said, they are not growing. There's no hunger whatsoever. 
just give us life lessons. You, you dare not tell them something that gets them offended because they are not going to come back. And if they don't come back, the offering is going to go down. And if the offering goes down, we can't pay bills. And if we can't pay bills, the church is going to close down. Is it your church? Is it your church? Is it yours? It's not a private business. It's not a profession. Ministry is not a profession. It's a calling. That's why you don't retire. So as I hear some means, I say, I'm retiring. I say, are you sure you were caught in the first place? You don't retire. It's a calling. There's no 401k in this job. You understand? <laughs> so there's no, there's no retirement fund. You just, you die and go to heaven when you're done. <laughs> They're sort of like, oh, I'm going to Florida now. <laughs> Nothing like that. You were caught while you were still in your mother's womb. Yes. Yes, sir. And the day you took your last breath, you are still going to be doing the work he's called you to do. Jesus. Can't retire from praying and interceding. We have so compromised the gospel, you just wonder, what, what are we listening to? You dare not even tell folks not to be shacking up because they are going to leave your church. Come back here. Oh. I said, in the bid to reach the unchurch, for the most part, many have lost the gospel. We have turned to motivational speakers instead of being oracles of God. Oh. But if we remember who called us and that the church is not ours, we just walk there. Because you are first a Christian before you are a minister. But when you become so, in, so, so into this is my, my, this protectionist mentality is what causes a lot of us ministers to compromise on the truth. He said, I have money. Teach me how to lay hands. I'll give you $10,000. And when you are asking for $10,000, it's when you have some financial press in it. The devil is sneaky. I told you. Yeah. He, he, he can't tempt you to give to God. No. He can't. I always ask this question. Have you ever been tempted to brush your teeth? Say, oh, I'm, I'm resisting this temptation to brush my teeth. You need to. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Remember, no, he exalts himself <laughs> above everything that is called what? God. Say, I'll give you money. I want that special gift. And, and Peter said, <laughs> Your money perish with you because. Your thoughts, you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter. For your heart is not right in the sight of God. I said, this guy was baptized. He said, repent, <laughs> therefore, of this your wickedness. And pray, God, if perhaps... The thoughts of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are poisoned by what? By bitterness. Notice, this is the revelation of his heart. He was bitter toward Philip because Philip took his business away from him. Just like the lady that was possessed with the spirit of divination, when Paul casted out that demon, the Bible said the master took a hold of Paul. Yeah. And took him to the center of the market. He said, kill him. Mm -hmm. That's how we got to find that Paul and Silas were in the prison in the midnight. It was as a result of them casting out that demon yeah. that took them to, to the prison. It was 
at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed, they sang, yes. and the Holy Ghost came and intervened. Yes. They didn't walk into there. Now, they could have found themselves in jail if they went to steal. Or they went to sleep with someone else's wife. They could have been there. So, I tell people, if you... <laughs> two things... Take, okay, let's do it. <laughs> All right, last one, last scripture, and I'll give my final thoughts. All right. Tell somebody be careful. We are in the last days. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. We are in the last days. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yes, sir. We are what? In the last days. In the last days. We thank you for listening to this message. We hope it's blessed you. You can write us at Grace House in Huber Heights, Ohio at P.O. Box 24395. You can also email us at media at gracehousechurch.org Also you can visit us on the web at www.gracehousechurch.org God bless you.